serious. People who used to be anti-LGBTQ+, but are now supportive. What changed your mind? Zach the person said. One of the big things that I was told growing up was the gay agenda, and how LGBTQ plus people are trying to convince other people to become LGBTQ plus by corrupting people. It was the reason they had pride parades, and it was the reason why evil Hollywood wanted to have gay characters in their show. It's also why you couldn't just leave people alone to be happy. You had to actively be against it since them being gay is affecting you and your children if you don't do something about it. I believe this pretty much 100% until I actually started meeting gay people. During middle school there was really only one gay guy we knew of and he was a really strange person which didn't help. During high school though, friends of mine started coming out as gay, and I usually ended up talking to at least one gay person a day. I realized they were just normal people, and not only that but they were good people. They weren't there to convince anyone else to be gay, they were just trying to live a life where they could be happy. Edit. Holy shit, it's not until I wrote this that I realized my parents have been conspiracy theorists my entire life and not just with recent events. Rock at 25 said. It's crazy how sometimes all it takes is just to know some LGBTQ plus people in real life. And religious adults who have already formed their own bubble of fear hate may never get that experience. The younger generation is lucky that it's easier to be out in public about your identity. I imagine a lot of older folks just assumed they never knew any gay or trans people because their peers were hiding it. But it's harder to be that sheltered now. Bernd Das Brot Forever said. One of the big things that I was told growing up was the gay agenda, and how LGBTQ plus people are trying to convince other people to become LGBTQ plus by corrupting people. It was the reason they had pride parades, and it was the reason why evil Hollywood wanted to have gay characters in their show. It's also why you couldn't just leave people alone, to be happy, you had to actively be against it since them being gay is affecting you and your children if you don't do something about it. Unfortunately this belief is getting spread to this very day. Ivan Karafwadam said. Destroy the nuclear family. I mean, the nuclear family is kind of a scam anyway lol. For most of human history and most of the world, people have lived in multi-generational and communal living situations. It takes a village, and all that. The hyper-individualistic American dream of the one-generation single-family home in the suburbs largely serves to take away the village and divide us. It also makes households incredibly inefficient and consume more. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that this also increases GDP, the top metric of our economy. Queer people run counter to the nuclear family not only because we're not on the heterosexual relationship escalator, marriage, house, kids, but also because we tend to band together into chosen families by necessity, for safety reasons. Straight Independence 62 said. Man I don't like it in general when parents assume that if their kid is trying something new or changing their opinion on something or disliking something they used to like or liking something they used to hate then it must be that they're being manipulated and not that they really are learning and changing. Like, I'm just using this as an example. If a kid starts wearing a new style of clothes and the parents go where who did you learn that from, as if they don't really prefer a new type of clothing and are just blindly following what someone else is telling them to do. It hasn't happened to me fortunately, but I know lots of parents do it. David Aspidner said. I was very anti-gay marriage. I was raised Mormon so it was the environment and belief system I inherited. But one day I heard the story of a gay couple who had been together for decades and one of them had fallen ill. He was so he was incapacitated and not able to communicate his wishes for treatment. The hospital contacted his family, whom he had been estranged from for decades to decide on his medical care. His partner of multiple decades was excluded to the point of not even being allowed to visit him in the hospital because they had no legal relationship. Gay marriage was not legal at the time. I remember feeling so sad for both of them and seeing the blatant unfairness and how it would be much better if they could be legally married. That's the day I changed my mind on the question of gay marriage. I make infants cry said. Same here, except with a different background. Honestly, just exposure on its own will do it. There's only so much hate you can feel towards someone until you start wondering how arbitrary it is. Interacting with people helps to actually view them as people rather than abstract concepts representing what I was told was a bad thing in a vacuum. And in my case as well it was due to growing up in an environment where it was just one of those life axioms that you just accept as gospel. 
Although, I do have to say that I'm less quick to judge hateful people as bad people because from my experience seeing people close to me, and knowing they're genuinely nice people, the hate can be their good intentions going through the lens of what they view as being right and wrong and without having direct exposure to those people to second-guess it. Ace Merrill said, I was raised Mormon. My parents weren't the hateful type at all, so I wouldn't describe myself as aggressively anti Plus, I was raised to treat people with kindness and never name call or be cruel. But I did think that homosexuality was a sin. Even if I thought that we are all sinners and it wasn't my place to judge, I still realize looking back how toxic that was. I started questioning that in high school and college that it didn't seem right for loving someone to be a sin, and I strongly opposed the church's support of Prop 8. That was the beginning of the end of my church membership, though it did take several years for me to really cut the cord. I can't really pinpoint a specific thing that changed my mind. Partly because I never really felt hate or disgust towards LGBTQ plus people. I think it was a mixture of growing up and getting a better understanding of sexuality in general, and also witnessing the more vitriolic homophobia. I was pretty sheltered growing up. So once I realized all of the awful things that LGBTQ plus people have to endure, I realized that I didn't want anything remotely to do with that. Desiree Rain said, This isn't true. People always try to make the Bible seem better than it is, but it supports tons of awful stuff, including homophobia. There are a couple of Old Testament verses that may have been against prostitution or pedophilia rather than homosexuality. Scholars disagree. But the one in the New Testament that mentions both male and female homosexuality and says God makes people gay as punishment for idolatry and then punishes them again for being gay, and calls homosexuality unnatural and an error and shameful, is absolutely about homosexuality, there is no other interpretation and scholars all agree. Merwin said, There is historical context behind Romans that many people ignore and focus on the sentence or two about sex between same-sex couples. The context of that chapter was all about idolatry, that is, public drunken celebrations of Roman gods that often included group public sex, and did not focus on condemning homosexuality itself. They were condemning Romans and their way of life as a whole. Plenty of scholars agree that it wasn't about homosexuality at all, but instead about defiling the body and worship of false idols. There are those that disagree, but it is not some general consensus among scholars. There simply isn't enough information to go on, and since it isn't a completely black-white issue in the Bible, it's still pretty silly that people will use it to justify violence. Desiree Rain said, Apparently it costs $37.50 to read that linked paper so I have no way to know what it actually says. But I don't think there's any significant amount of scholars who think that, from everything I've heard it's pretty agreed what the verse is about. But the way the verse is worded really seems to leave little doubt that it's saying homosexuality is unnatural and sinful. I mean it is says for this reason, viz idolatry, God gave them up to passions of dishonor, for even their females exchanged the natural use for that which is contrary to nature, and likewise also the males, having left the natural use of the female, were inflamed by their lust for one another, males with males, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the recompense which was fitting for their error. It is about idolatry too, but it says only straight sex is natural and that homosexuality is contrary to nature and shameful. I mean, if it's about defiling the body and worship of false idols, it's still saying having homosexual sex qualifies as defiling the body. And it's saying that it's because of the idol worship that God gave them up to these passions of dishonor, like because they worshipped idols he turned them gay and made them do these unnatural, shameful things. Merwin said. You can read the abstract for free, which disputes your post. There are also plenty of other books and articles on the subject, by other authors. I'm not taking the time to list them out because it's simple enough to find. With that said, to your other points, Romans was not written line by line. There is context around the sentence that you're referring to that kept after the point regarding idolatry. And yeah, biblical authors view sex between men and women as natural because that is how you procreate. They even condemn male masturbation because it spills the seed of life, which they view as murder. Unfortunately, as science has advanced, we recognize that homosexuality is natural because it exists in nature, that is, the definition of natural, across many species. It also serves as an evolutionary purpose in other species as gay couples will adopt and parent orphans and rejected young produced by other animals.
Merwin said. So, realistically, it doesn't really matter if it was called unnatural back then, because we know that isn't actually the case anymore. If it's about defiling the body and worship of false idols, it's still saying having homosexual sex qualifies as defiling the body. Way to twist what I said to meet your means, because that isn't what it says. The whole defiling the body bit was my interpretation of using the body to celebrate false idols, has nothing to do with how you have sex, just that sex, gay or straight, to worship false gods. The entire chapter has a single line about gay sex. The entire chapter is condemning people for idolatry. It isn't about the sex. Merwin said. Further, earlier you said. There's no other interpretation and scholars all agree. Which is absolutely untrue because there are plenty of peer-reviewed published articles on the subject that dispute what you said. The front page of this article references how many scholars do not agree that Romans referred to gay couples in loving relationships in this section, which refutes your point that scholars all agree. It's more complicated than that, and you speaking as an authority saying that everyone believes the same thing is a bad faith argument. I'm merely saying they don't all agree, and many make the case against your interpretation, which I've reflected above. There is no consensus. Clinging onto this as pure gospel would be foolish because it is not that clear if you have biblical scholars, not simply lay people, in disagreement. Ace Merrill said. That had to be rough, I'm really sorry. I struggled enough just not fitting traditional gender norms, even being cis and straight. I had a lesson once where a special teacher came in and told us how we would never get married if we liked to play sports. When I first left, I felt like I could maybe go back if they changed stuff, but I don't think I can now. The misogyny is really baked in all the way back to Adam and Eve, so it's hard to imagine changes that could make me feel good about going back. And the more I question my childhood beliefs, the more I realize there's a whole lot that doesn't hold up under honest scrutiny. Up to down one said. I wouldn't characterize that as late, but perhaps it's just because I have a similar story to yours. I grew up in a very conservative religious family, and like you parroted a lot of what I heard. And just like you, around age 14 I started thinking more for myself and questioning the things I've been brought up on. Eventually at 18 I left religion altogether and over the years since I've swung very far left economically and socially. Lucky for me, the rest of my nuclear family started shifting in that direction later on. They're still religious, but they've given up on organized religion. I think 14 is probably around the time your brain becomes developed enough to start forming your own opinion on complex issues rather than just reiterating what you've heard at home. Mark Hayersbrunner said. Even when I was a dumb teenager in the 80s I thought hating people for being gay was wrong, but I was still typically homophobic. By my late teens I had a friend who was bisexual and, though he technically wasn't out, everybody knew. I got over my fear of gay people hitting on me, but I essentially had two circles of friends and I definitely didn't want my head banging friends to know I sometimes hung out with Scotty and the clique of goth kids he was part of. Things changed around 96 when I started hanging with people in the city I worked at instead of the people in the small town I lived in. In 98 I had a gay boss I was friends with and would hang out with him after work at a gay bar. Around then I stopped wanting to be friends with homophobic people. By the time I had gay kids, I was well prepared for it. Good thing, none of the three are completely heterosexual, though the oldest has been in a hetero relationship for five years. Middle child is ace, leaning gay. Youngest came out as Pan last year. Lega Monstruck said. Regarding the transgender community, not so much anti, more ignorant to it. Actually, it wasn't until the whole JK Rowling situation last year did I sit up and take notice. My knee-jerk reaction was to agree full-heartedly with her. But then, I went on the Twitter, what a cesspit seriously, and started to read different people's opinions. Then I started to Google about transgender people. The problem was I wasn't being empathetic, I never tried to imagine what it was like for a person who didn't belong in their body. The more I read into it, the more I support trans people. I know that everyone hates JK for what she said but she has brought light onto a situation, probably in the worst way, and made me more open-minded than I was previously. Transgender people must go through hell and back on their journey and they have my absolute respect. As for the LGB community, I grew up in a very conservative family and I didn't know anyone who was openly gay. It wasn't until I had moved out and explored the world a little bit more did I consider it normal. Now, 
I can't believe the community is still getting hate all these years later. My 8-year-old son doesn't even question it when he sees a lesbian gay couple of TV, it's just normal to him and that's the way it will stay. Ethan Ra said. I'm so glad it's normal to you now. I was in the same boat, I didn't hate but I also didn't fully understand. I had a few friends that were gay, but I didn't understand the trans men and women. Then I met a woman that was very open about her transition, and it really opened my eyes. I know not everyone who transitions is comfortable with taking about the whole process, but she is happy to talk about it in the hopes that taking about it will make it more normal for others struggling. She really opened my eyes about something I genuinely didn't understand and I'm so thankful for her being that open about it. I reached out to her to ask if it was okay to share her story with my kid about how Auntie Y was born in the wrong body as a boy, but was always Auntie Y. My kid's response was just to say that she's glad Auntie Y is her true self and that she's very pretty. Sorry for the long story, it just makes me happy reading that other parents overcame their misunderstanding and chose to raise the next generation with a better understanding than we had. Fenrir the Magnificent said. It was the day the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage. I was sitting by the pool watching my kids play and was legitimately heartbroken because I couldn't take the hate coming out of the conservative Christian community I had grown up and participated in. I thought I just want to love everyone and I could feel Jesus being like she's finally got IT. That began the journey, which did take a while, I knew I needed to grapple with my issues but kept putting it off. In 2016 my husband told me he could no longer attend any church that supported the rhetoric coming out of a certain political party and that began a different journey that led us to the Episcopal denomination. The priest decided he was going to get us involved and set about finding out how to do that, he discovered that we played EMD and hooked us that way and that's when I learned the most, because our priest and our church friends who played with us were very active in the LGBTQ plus community in our area especially with teens since they are such an at-risk group. I still don't know as much as I should, but I firmly believe that when God said I love everyone they meant it, and that I should do the same. I know that's not a position held by many in the conservative denominations but when I kick the bucket and God wants to know what I did with my life I want to be able to say I tried to love like Jesus did, no matter the cultural mores of my day, note, I will not debate theology on the interwebs. Isaac Ovi said. Oh boy, not proud of this but here we go. Father was very oppressive and horrible about minorities he still is he was the cool parent in the whole divorce ordeal so naturally I looked up to him and took on board everything he said so when he expressed his hate for minorities, I took that to also my hateful tendencies weren't helped by me browsing 4chan. I'm not really sure what clicked, but I started to realize how bullshit it was that I hated people just because of who they were they weren't harming me they weren't bothering me they were just being who they were and if I was allowed to be free and be who I wanted to be, why should they be any different? Also I realized I might not be as straight as I thought I was. The Ogthesis said. When I was in my late teens early 20s I commented that I didn't think LGBTQ plus should be allowed to get married two friends of mine laughed, at my own stupidity, then gently asked why I thought that. It genuinely stumped me and I realized it was more a thought that I was taught rather than my own thoughts and feelings. I realized I had no reason to not allow two people that love each other to get married. Yeah I was a dumb kid, but one thing I'll never forget was how my friends didn't make me feel stupid. They just asked questions and listened to my responses, then asked more questions. Thanks Tash and Pat. Violinist Rich said. I was raised very religious and taught to hate the sin, love the sinner. I believed that gay people were going to hell unless they repented and both became Christians and didn't act on their orientation. It wasn't until college that I met a bunch of wonderful, out queers who somehow wanted to be friends with me. They patiently, compassionately, but firmly confronted my anti lgbtqa plus attitudes. They didn't let me get away with saying homophobic shit, but they didn't abandon me as a friend, either. I'm so grateful for their influence, their patience, and their courage in helping me change my mind. Without them, I'd probably still be a hateful fart and maybe would have never realized that I'm queer, too. I've Papias Large said. I wouldn't consider myself ever homophobic. Yes, I used gay as an insult and I used the F slur, but that was because I heard others around me using them in derogatory ways, and I followed suit. I didn't really know what those words meant. And once I did learn I don't think I ever felt negatively about gay people. That being said, I was a transphobic piece of shit. 
Again, this was me repeating what people around me were saying, but I knew what the words meant. But turns out I'm B, new since 8th grade, that's when I basically dropped the majority of my homotransphobia, and I've been entirely accepting since. Becker with have been said. Ove for the first time at 18, around the same time that my best friend came out as gay. Previously, I was honestly just a naive child who didn't understand the world, so I was passive about the issue and didn't understand why these people were so up in arms about their sexual orientation. I didn't feel strongly either way, but if I had to pick a side I'd say I chose the attitude of those around me which was that these people were strange and too flamboyant. I agreed with my parents' vote on Prop 8 that marriage was between a man and a woman and anything else was unnatural. After I went off to college, I met my first boyfriend and felt hard. My friend called me up and came out to me cheerfully. I remember I took the call with my boyfriend sitting next to me. I looked at him and it clicked that if anyone told me my love was anything other than right or I was barred from being with him I'd be devastated. So, that was it. I started to listen and recognized that treating anyone's feelings as lesser than mine was not only misguided, but it was damaging to those who had been told that they couldn't live in their own skin out in the world. Fox School said. The furry community. It's very open and accepting so a significant portion is LGBTQ+. A survey some years ago showed an even split between gay, straight, and b. A few months of lurking introduced me to a lot of gay, trans, etc. people and I quickly realized that they were all just people. They weren't disgusting perverts, or pushing some nefarious agenda, or part of some vast leftist conspiracy like my parents had told me. They were just people who wanted to be free to live in love and creatively celebrate their weird obsession with cute fluffy animal people. I also saw how they suffered. Read story after story of the discrimination, rejection, and abuse they faced. Cried at the news that another of us had taken their own life because their family could love the son they wanted but not the daughter they had. It was in this moment that I decided it didn't matter whether the church or my family were right, be they God or man, no parents should ever drive their children to suicide. The Count of Sisotoki said. I was a typical 90s teenager and everything was gay to me. We grew up in the country as far as socially accepting dynamics are concerned. It used to be a hilarious phrase that I would use on my friends with impunity. Gay seemed to be associated with everything negative in the world and I never did any research. I just assumed gay people were ruining society and never thought twice about it. I remember when my Christian parents found out that my brother was gay and how they threw plates and dishes all over the house telling him he was just confused. I remember knowing about his earlier boyfriends and not being able to say anything to him or have any reasonable communication. Not being able to talk openly as a family and not including him because of who he loved. I've always loved my brother and I always will, it's been a pretty surreal experience within a hardcore Christian family even though I'm agnostic. We all had to grow so much and work on ourselves. Watching my now 82 year old grandmother sit down now with my brother and his husband to play cards reminds me of what bigotry could have done to my family, but thankfully didn't. The Pillowman said. I'll chime in with my answer. I was religious when I was younger and believed homosexuality was a sin, but the biggest reason I was a homophobe was that I thought all gay people were sex crazed perverts that couldn't control themselves. This was because I was bullied when I was younger and one running joke between some people in my school was to pretend they were gay and attracted to me. Basically I thought the gays were out to get me as I like to put it. With time I realized that gay people were mostly normal people who just wanted to live their lives, and I came to realize my initial perception of homosexuality was wrong. The unfortunate thing was that I did hold strong homophobic views when I was younger and expressed them to family and close friends. There was a girl I was very close friends with that I shared these opinions with, and we fell out of touch because I pursued her romantically when I was 18. Three years later I found out she was lesbian. This was the biggest regret of my whole life and I can't imagine how bad I must have made her feel about herself. Fortunately I had the chance to apologize since she reached out to me a few months ago and she accepted my apology. Though it broke my heart when she said she was happy I was accepting since she thought I wouldn't want to be friends with her after she came out. Miami Stats said. Growing up I was in a very religious family, and my parents were very traditional Christians. They put me in a Christian private school my entire kindergarten 12th grade education, having me attend church Wednesday nights, Sundays, and chapel at school. 
Having the Bible shoved down my throat and being surrounded by others in the same situation, we were all told while growing up that being gay was a sin. The school I attended had all students sign a contract, basically saying that we would not be gay, and if we were, we would not act on it. My senior year of high school I became really close friends to a girl a couple of grades under me, and she told me she was gay and had a GF of a couple years. She had revealed to me that she had tried conversion therapy, and had been to a Christian counselor as well. She eventually was kicked out of our private school for having a girlfriend. After that all happened, and having one of my closest friends kicked out of my Christian We Love All school, it made me realize that being gay isn't the sin, but not showing love to others is the sin. Trashy Artsy said. I wasn't really anti, but I just followed what my mom and grandma thought. I grew up with only them, and believed that it was wrong. Somewhere around 4th or 5th grade, I started falling in love with a female classmate. I think it was just puppy love but IDK, I knew, which kinda made me think I'm gross for that, cause my grandma had started saying even more homophobic stuff. I later realized at around age 13 that I was wrong and maybe part of it myself. I'm currently a closeted pansexual. Plus my best friend ended up coming out and it helped me understand the beauty of just being yourself, at least to the people who you trust and who support you, and for that I'm forever grateful to her. P.S. I never told my feelings my fellow female classmate cause she started being a bully against everyone else.